Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio today. We're going to be talking some sports with Val. Might be a slightly important game going on tonight. I don't know. I've heard some rumblings about uh, this game mm -hmm. that Rochester plays with Valley every year. Some kind of bell thing or whatever. I yeah. don't know. But, uh, the bell game is zero days away. The bell game is coming up tonight. and uh, it's, been, it's been kind of a Valley bell Mm -hmm. for quite a while here they've kind of dominated the series in the last few years we're going to talk more about that here as we go and then uh, we're going to get some uh, uh, recaps from week one been a busy week in sports in general not only just football so first off how are you doing Val? yeah doing great uh, I've been uh, again I always recommend follow, I'm a, I, I like to think I'm a pretty decent follow on Twitter or slash X uh, and any games that I haven't written about yet I've probably tweeted about them or if I haven't or X, X posted about them. So if I haven't, yeah. uh, if you haven't seen me at a, maybe you've seen me at a sporting event, but I haven't written it out yet. I'm, uh, at least I tweet about it, and I might get around to writing about it. I might not, but I, I, I'm hopeful that I will be. I've been to a couple of Rochester. I went to the, uh, you know, I, obviously I wrote about the the Jacob Graff invite and the the Tomahawk invite, and those were pretty lo long articles that. You want to get everybody's results in there, and yeah. Uh, but again, I, believe me, if if you haven't seen me at your sporting event, it doesn't mean I'm not keeping track. I'm keeping track, and I'm probably uh, writing about it on social media. So, uh, thank you for following me. And uh, I mean, you yeah. can't you can't be at three places at once. I tried. <laughs> uh, I got to the Cast and Pioneer volleyball match last night, and it it was over. Uh, by the time I got there, but I didn't. I get a chance to talk to Rod and I's. But again, the, those those things just happen sometimes. But mm -hmm. again, thank you for following me on social media. But that kind of fills in some of the blanks, and uh, if in, in case I, you haven't seen a story from me yet. Yeah. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the IHSA's executive meeting last week, and and they did have that meeting. We didn't quite get everything that we thought we were going to get as far yeah. as um, sectionals and and sites and everything, but we did get some answers as to uh, who uh, softball, baseball, and uh, where they're going to be playing, and it is very similar to, to what uh, what they're doing for basketball and volleyball. Right, and so, yeah, this shouldn't have been too shocking, and I think we mentioned that, you know, there was a video on YouTube where Paul Neidig said, we want uniformity. We mm -hmm. want more rivalries. We want more, uh, you know, I guess, common opponents. We think that'll be great for the fans, and so yeah, you should not have been surprised. Uh, the new softball sectional in Class 2A, Sectional 38, is uh, Eastern, Lewis Cass, Manchester, Oak Hill, Rochester, and Wabash. Of course, Rochester won their sectional last year in softball, Lewis Cass, with a great tradition. Uh, they won it two years ago, as recently as just a couple of years ago. Eastern has a tremendous softball tradition, but I think they are going to have a new coach next year. Uh, of course, Manchester beat Rochester last year. They're they're thinking they're going to have a chance, mm -hmm. and we believe Oak Hill is going to be at home. I'm, I imagine they'll be formidable as well. Yeah, should be interesting to to see. You know, when we get into that, obviously, but the Rochester very young last year and able to win that sectional. So where, where can they go this year? It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Class Three A sectional twenty for softball: Columbia City, Fairfield, Northwood, Tippecanoe Valley, Wawasee, West Noble. There's no defending sectional champion in this sectional. So you don't know. I mean, Valley's not in the sectional of the Kankakee Valley anymore. Uh, they were Kankakee Valley rolled the sectional title last year. I think they won the three games like twenty-four to one or something by a combined score twenty-four to one. So I think this is going to be a little bit more of a wide-open sectional. Uh, Class One A sectional fifty: Caston, Demott Christian, North Newton, North White, Pioneer, South Newton, Tri County, West Central. So the same for as basketball. Um, obviously, Caston and Pioneer in the same sectional is kind of noteworthy, but I think you'd have to say the Lady Panthers are going to be certainly a contender, especially going down from 2A to 1A. They were, you know, a very formidable 2A team, so they, and they return a whole bunch of girls for next year. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, the, you know, the last time they played North Newton in the sectional game, they lost. Yeah. Still have that really good pitcher, don't they? She'd be a senior this Sydney, year. Sydney Rainford, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, she was, uh, I think, a freshman when they played and and kind of uh, handled the, the Panthers a little bit. So yeah. that'd be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, and then uh, Class 1A, uh, Sectional 51, Argus Culver, Elkhart Christian, North Judson, Oregon Davis, 
South Central and Triton. Obviously, the team with the best tradition in the sectional is South Central. Mm -hmm. They have had a great softball tradition over the years. Uh, we, d I, I did, to be honest, I didn't even know Elkhart Christian had a softball program. Uh, North Judson's been getting a little bit better. Um, they were a pretty young team last year. We saw yeah, them. They're yeah. going down from 2A to 1A, uh, so we will see how they do. Uh, and then uh, Class 2A, Sectional 34, Bremen, South Bend Career Academy, Jimtown, Knox, LaVille, and Winnemac. Boy, the, obviously, you know, with Bremen and Winnemac, boy, two standout programs mm -hmm. who have had good softball programs for a long time. I, I believe you know Knox. Boy, they they were still pretty young last year. I think yeah. Knox will be yeah. formidable. They will be formidable. I think Jimtown is pretty good as well. Yeah, Knox had a win over Pioneer last year, right? A uh, regular season win in the conference game. I think I think so. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, young squad there, and and they seem to be uh, you know going in the right direction. But uh, yeah, you know Bremen P P pesky hitters who don't strike out very often. Yeah, can't ever. Uh, can't ever sleep on Bremen, and of course Winnemac. You know they just traditionally have uh, some good programs over there as well. So, mm -hmm. be interesting. And yeah, so all the same uh, alignments for baseball. And all that the we same had alignments softball. for baseball as for softball. So again, yeah. Class Two A Sectional Thirty Eight: Eastern, Lewis, Cass, Manchester, Oak Hill, Rochester, and Wabash. Boy, some great, some great venues in that sectional. With, I mean, Eastern. They're Eastern has a brand new ballpark. Wabash. We love going to Chris Root Field, but we don't think it's going to be at Chris Root Field. We think it's going to be at Oak Hill. Hmm. And, of course, that's where Rochester played in the semi-state last year, so that's another great venue. Right. Uh, but, boy, it's just because the Zebras are the defending regional champion, that's not going to be some sort of walkover. Eastern, Coach Heisner does a great, great job at Eastern. Hill will have a strong program. Lewis Cass with, uh, always has a great team. Manchester, you know, they'll bring a lot of kids back from last year. Obviously, they graduated Martin Ovitz, but they're still going to be tough. Oak Hill will be tough at home on the turf. Uh, and, of course, Coach uh, Holly does a great job at Wabash. I mean, they're going to have to replace some seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, th you know, they'll be competitive and feisty like they always are. Mm -hmm. Class 3A, sectional 20. Again, this is a whole new sectional for Valley. They're in with Columbia City, Fairfield, Northwood, Wawasee, and West Noble. Uh, I, in fact, I don't believe there is a defending sectional champion in this baseball sectional either. Mm -hmm. uh, Wawasee did win a couple recently, I think 2021 and 2022. Um, Northwood has had a solid, solid program over the years yeah. as well. Uh, Fair, Fairfield has and, got a and, pretty decent oh yeah, and, uh, and tradition up there. Too, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but maybe probably the best tradition maybe in that mm -hmm. uh, sectional, but didn't. Uh, and that, Yeah, they'll be good. Uh, Class 1A, sectional 50. Again, Caston, DeMott Christian, North Newton, North White, Pioneer, South Newton, Tri-County, and West Central. Obviously, if you're Pioneer, going from 2A down to 1A, that's going to be a big help. But obviously, you're going to have to replace Braden Erickson. Um, you know, we'll see about Cast obviously having to graduate a great group of seniors. Yeah. Um, but again, Coach Mollenkoff, just, he always keeps replenishing the talent. Uh, I don't know much about DeMott Christian and baseball. I know North Newton has had some solid teams over the years. North White with Coach Quaysbarth. They're always competitive. Um, we'll see Tri-County has a great baseball tradition as well. I'd be curious to see who would host that. Uh, back in the day, Tri-County hosted it every year at Remington Park, which was a really nice facility. Hmm. Uh, but North White hosted it last year. I know Caston has hosted the sectional for a long time, but they would be the Caston's the furthest east yeah. So I don't know if that would affect whether they would get to host or not. Uh, class 1A, sectional 51 for baseball. Argus, Culver, Elkhart Christian, North Judson, Oregon Davis, South Central, and Triton. Again, uh, if you're Ar Argus or Culver fan, you don't have to worry about making a trip to Tri Township. Uh, but we will see who would host this. I know North Judson hosted a 2A sectional last year. Um, obviously, the again, the school with the greatest tradition in the sectional, South Central. The satellites have been... Tremendous over the years, and they will—they are certainly glad to be going from 2A back down to 1A. Mm -hmm. They have thrived in 1A over the years, but struggled a little bit in 2A when they ran into those Hebron Hawks the last couple of years. Yeah, and then Class 2A sectional 34 for baseball: Bremen, South Bend Career Academy, Jimtown, Knox, Laville, and Winnemac. Uh, again, Winnemac, uh, you know, went 500 last year. They've got a lot of kids coming back. You know, they'll, you know, they'll have Addison Allen. I, I saw Coach Hendricks at the football scrimmage. He goes, Val, you better be coming to our baseball games next year. So uh, he's, he's, 
he's definitely excited about what he has moving forward. Um, you know, Laville, they're going to graduate some kids, but they got Zarnecki. So you, as long as they have him on the mound, they'll have a chance. Jim Todd has had a really solid baseball program over the years, and Bremen has had maybe the best baseball tradition in that sectional, won a sectional as recently as 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bremen's got a lot of history there. So that, that'll be an interesting one there for the Warriors. So Yeah. I uh, wanted to mention uh, congratulations to Alicia Ewing Franstead. Um, she won her 100th career game, or 100th career match as the volleyball coach at Mishawaka Marion. And why are we talking about the volleyball coach at Mishawaka Marion? Well, she isn't famous around these parts for her volleyball coaching. She's famous for winning the state title in the high jump in 2000. Hmm. Back when she was Alicia Ewing, back when she was a lady zebra. Okay. So won her 100th career volleyball. Ball match. He's in the Rochester Athletic Hall of Fame, and I wanted to give a shout out to Alicia. Great job. Yeah, congratulations. And uh, the track state finals will be moving to North Central High School in Indianapolis. Oh wow. We we believe it's just for one year only. I don't know if they have some, if that's just uh, they have some renovations going down in Bloomington. I think I think that's why they didn't explain in the in their press release why they were moving it. Huh. Or for how long they were moving it, but it's going to be in North Central High School in Indianapolis. I guess I know. I'm I'm biased. I was kind of hoping that they were going to move it from Bloomington. I hope they were going to. I was hoping they were going to put it in Kokomo. Yeah. But North Central High School in Indianapolis, I'm sure, is more centrally located. Working on the new uh, Val T Sports Complex down there in Bloomington, are they? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, North Central High School in Indy is where it's going to be. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and start fresh here with uh, some Rochester Zebras when we get back. Here in just a moment, talking sports with Val. Are you in need of branded apparel, promotional products, custom signs, graphic design for your business, church, or organization? The Winning Edge can provide a dedicated service rep to ensure you have custom products when you need them. Need a way to provide custom items to your employees or customers? The Winning Edge can set up a customized Edge store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause with no additional charge. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, promotional items, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide the results you need for success. Find your Edge by calling 574-223-6090, going to thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hey, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I'm here today on behalf of Nationwide and Jennings Insurance Agency to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, off-road vehicles like ATVs and UTVs. Now I know we all love to get out there and ride through the mud and the dirt, but the truth is, we need to be more mindful of our own safety and the safety of others. In recent years, there's been a huge increase of off-road vehicle usage, which unfortunately means there's also been a rise in accidents. Whether you're a new user or a seasoned rider, we can turn this trend around by continuing to focus on safety. For starters, I recommend that you check out the safety resources and training courses available on Nationwide's website at nationwide.com slash ATV safety. Let's all do our part to make sure we're staying safe out there. And thanks for riding with me. Welcome back here as we talk sports with Val on a week two Friday afternoon. Pretty good week one for five of our schools. We had five of the six schools that we cover picking up week one victories. Let's start off talking about the Rochester Zebras at home taking on the Wabash Apaches and trying to keep that uh, win streak alive there. Wabash had never defeated Rochester in conference play in, what, 16 tries, 18 yeah, tries? Right, yeah, 16 and 0. It was like, yeah. Yeah, it was like technically 15 and 0 in one sectional game and okay. thrown in there, but yeah. And uh, Rochester left no doubt about this game. This one was over about halfway through the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the first it... quarter that went on forever, it seemed like. Yeah. I don't know why that first quarter seemed to take forever, but, uh, you know, we see yeah, here. You, the... you know, you hope your team is ready to start the season, and I think the opening kickoff, Wabash gets minus four yards on the return. I mean, they were. Yeah, good coverage. A couple of penalties, yeah. but uh, the first actual play from scrimmage, and the, the Zebras get on the board here. 
Yeah, that was, I think, Parks got there. Uh, it was actually, uh, this. I, I couldn't tell if the, I still to the, couldn't tell if Hayden McWhorton missed the snap or just wasn't expecting the snap, but Baldwin gets tackled in the end zone for a safety. And then Rochester, the uh, Zach Parks returns the free kick after the safety down to the, uh, I think it was the twenty, the thirty yard line, then a twenty five yard pass, and then ran back right up the middle for a touchdown. It was eight to nothing, less than a minute into the game. And then that was the trap play to Brant Beck, and he is going to win the race to the end zone. And He's going to win a lot of races to yeah. the end zone, I think. <laughs> yeah, that made it fifteen to nothing. And then here's the this this pass. It looked like a, just the Rochester defender just tripped and fell. You know, R Randy Wynn asked me what happened in in, in the moment. I, I couldn't see. It looked like the Rochester defender just fell as he was about to tackle and Devon Osborne with a nice move. Apparently, uh, Osborne didn't play in Wabash's scrimmage, and Rochester didn't really know a whole lot about him. We'd seen Ro Osborne on the basketball court last. I mean, we knew he was a pretty athletic kid. That was a nice move. It was called back by a holding penalty. Drew Bowers got held on that play. If you if you look at it again, so no touchdown. And that that was a big one there because obviously it was mm -hmm. still uh, anybody's game. Mm -hmm. And look at that counter. That was a thing of beauty by both Pollock and Clarence Garrett. Uh, Clarence Garrett almost looked like he kind of dead legged it, at, like like he like he didn't think he was getting getting the ball. And then this is the sweep to. Kai Murphy for a touchdown. I, Kai Murphy is going to be a big factor in this team as they just caved in the left side of the defensive line. I mean, they just obliterated. The, if you look at the blocking on that, so they made it twenty-two to nothing. And then this happened. Grant Clark hits Hayden McWhorton in the arm. The pass kind of wobbles a little bit, and Zach Park picks it off, and he goes untouched. Forty-six yeah. yards for a touchdown, and with four eighteen to go in the first quarter, it was twenty-nine to nothing. Impressive game for uh, Parks. I thought he played excellent. For Parks and for Clark. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, he is – you You do not want to get blocked by him if he's Ooh. playing tight end. And he is a going to be a force at defensive end. Yeah, we'll see a play coming up here yeah. shortly from him on the defensive yeah. side of things that was pretty awesome. Yeah, Maddox Jewell got involved uh, in the second quarter. That's a touchdown. The uh, – Extra point was no good, so it was 35 to nothing at that point. And then a, a late turnover. Boy, this is a – just I saw this – ran this back a couple times watching a video. Just a beautiful pass from Carson Pollock to Drew Bowers for a touchdown. I mean, that couldn't have been any better. Well, we're going to run it back here too, so. Yeah. I mean, he put just enough air on it. He had a – again, I was kind of laughing because, you know, we don't think of Drew as the tallest guy, but he had about a two- or three-inch height advantage on the Wabash defender covering him. He had man-to-man -man coverage, just a great read by Pollock, and he finds Bowers for the touchdown. And uh, Davis Reney would tack on the extra point, and it was 42 nothing at halftime. And the final score was 42 to nothing. Yeah. Uh, what was interesting to note is I think the leading ball carrier in terms of just number of carries was Alejandro Chapman, the freshman, who got in in the second half. Which I, But I think, the, of course, what I'm really trying to say is that None of the main guys carried the ball that much. I think yeah. Grant Beck had four carries all night. Yeah, Jewel had three. Garrett had two or three. Parks had one or two carries. So none of the main guys for Rochester carried the ball. Uh, the Rochester first team defense did play in the second half. I think they were pretty intent on getting that shutout. Uh, but uh, definitely a, a very nice win. So obviously coming into tonight's game, heading over to Death Valley, that's a, a monster game. Does the fact that you didn't have to play a full game help or hurt at this point? Because you're well rested, although you've probably been practicing, I don't know, I think they were practicing late in the evenings to try and avoid the heat this week. Yeah. Um, you know, does that help or hurt? Because you're still pretty young into the season. You probably want to get those reps in as far as, your starters go, but they didn't really have to play a whole lot in that second half. So do you think that that's going to... Given the weather forecast for tonight, it's supposed to be around 83 degrees at game time. I would say it's a help. Yeah. Any any bit of rest you can get your guys, I think it would be a help. Uh, but, what you know, again, there's there's going to be cramping tonight. I There's no doubt about that. These yeah. guys play way too... This game is so physical. I mean, 
and then combined with the weather, it's going to be tough. The conditions are going to be tough, but I, I think th I think that'll be that'll be okay. I think um, the, the the key is more the this the valley is going to bring there it's a bigger valley line of scrimmage on both sides on both sides of the ball. So how will will Rochester handle the will, will Valley be as physical as they were last year? Mm -hmm. Will Rochester be quick off the ball mm -hmm. to respond to that? I think that's obviously it's going to be a huge factor. Uh, the other the other factor is that uh, uh, you know if it, if it does rain, who does that favor? I, I I've said that a rainy field will would favor Rochester in this game. And the reason why I say that is because Valley's kicker Gage Overby has kicked nine career field goals. He can kick a forty or fifty yarder. Mm -hmm. Rochester doesn't have anybody on their team who's ever kicked a field goal in a high school football game. Mm -hmm. So that is that is a big advantage for Valley. So a rainy weather might negate that a little bit. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's sloppy, if it's tough to get down a snap, tough to get down a hold, tough for Overby to plant his leg and get his foot into it, that might favor Rochester a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but again, I, I expect uh, an absolute. It's going to be a a very physical game tonight, and I uh, and, and it was interesting. I was talking with Stephen Moriarty this week, and I said, I asked him about Rochester's running running game. He goes, I don't. I mean, again, this is a Valley team that prides itself on its run defense. He goes, we're just going to hope to slow them down. I don't think we can stop them. Hmm. He, he talks about slowing them down, and he also talked about. Boy, how how fast Brand Beck hits the hole on those tra on trap and belly. Mm -hmm. Like man, like like I mean, you know, if you thought Deming was tough to stop, I mean, Brand Beck almost hits the hole even harder. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be interesting. But I I think you know, guys like Parks and Jewel and Garrett are going to play an even bigger role in this game. Yeah, Valley had some some pretty good pass plays last week in their win so yeah you know they're gonna have to make sure that not only do you have to right. account for the running game but you also have to uh account for that pass game for the the vikings on the defensive side for rochester right and i mean uh you know how will rochester stop Wes parker four carries for 149 yards and three touchdowns on four, four carries <laughs> um, and uh you know talking with ron schaefer he talks about just Parker was just so he's just so smooth when he runs. He mm -hmm. doesn't look like he's running hard, but he's running really hard, and he's just great on that counter play. Huh. Somebody named Parker running back and doing well yeah, for Valley. That's yeah. shocking. <laughs> so, and but again, uh, you know, Cody Eastgate had really the game of his life last year uh, against Rochester. Now, you know, what can Jamison Phillips do in this game? Mm -hmm. And will will the will Valley and their offensive coordinator Carl Weaver will he? Call the type of plays for Jamison Phillips that he did for Eastgate, or will you just kind of hope that Phillips just kind of manages the game? Because yeah. this is just a second career start, and all of a sudden you've got this defense that's coming off a shutout coming at you. But uh, again, I Rochester is just it's you know I, again I I think Rochester's secondary is you know they had a lot of sophomores in that defensive secondary last year. Now all those guys are juniors. Yeah. And meanwhile, Valley's it's Valley's wide. Re you know, Valley had a bunch of senior wide receivers last year. Now mm -hmm. they're now they're a lot younger. Yeah, be interested to see what Amandi can do. Yeah, he, he had a really good game against Wawasee as well, and he had a big touchdown catch. Yeah, I think what was it two years ago when we were at Valley that it seemed like the the Vikings the whole first half they they had a different formation every play. I mean, it was like they had the whole playbook laid yeah. out and they were just going down yeah. through there page by page. Right. Like, hey, we ran that one. Okay, let's run this one. Right. So we'll yeah. see if they if yeah. they try that again. And then once they got the lead at halftime in the second half, they went to give the ball to Nate Parker. Right. And they basically went. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's pound it down the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, I, I, I'm I'm very I'm very curious. Uh, and you know, I was talking about I was talking with Ron Schaefer about will Callan Furvita will he benefit if Xavier Vance gets double teams? And he was like, we thought Callan was getting the double team. Mm. I mean, the way Callan was playing, I mean. He, he had a really good game as well. So, yeah. Again, uh, Valley's blocking schemes are going to be really interesting in this game because they got you know again Asher McGriff is uh, is the Valley center. He's played a lot of offensive line before. But he hasn't played much center. So I mean he's got to communicate to his linemen about where we're going with these blocks because if you if you do double team Vance and I I get it but boy that that can lead to other guys getting loose. Yeah. Going to be an interesting game. It's yeah, always yeah. interesting, but uh, should be a fun one. And again, it was it was one year ago. Rochester lost to Valley. They basically 
switched the defensive philosophy in one week. The mm-hmm. next week, yeah. they went with put moved back from safety to linebacker, moved Deming from uh, linebacker, linebacker to end, mm-hmm. and went basically went from a four three to more of a four two mm-hmm. five. Um, so we'll, seemed to work, <laughs> and, and they five shutouts in nine games yeah. since. Yeah. So yeah, it's worked. So yeah. and boy, Ethan Bailey played well too. I mean, he's uh, he's really been coming on. So boy, there there are just not a lot of weaknesses in this defense. I'll be very curious to see how Valley attacks Rochester and and how well this Rochester defense holds up. Yeah, and you saw with that highlight too. You know, Parks is is much steadier back there in the in the defensive backfield as well. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to be one that they're going to have an opportunity to pick on. Yeah. So, right. And they'll they'll put they'll put Parks on Omandi, I think. Yeah, or, I would assume or, so. Or Parker. Yeah. Yeah. All right, volleyball was over at North Miami on Saturday for the Tomahawk Invite. Ended up finishing 2-2 two and two on the day in fourth place. Right, they started the day with a really nice win over North Miami. The team that knocked them out of sectionals last year beat them 16-14 in the third set. Hmm. So that was a great win. Then they beat Delphi 25-9, 25-14. And guess who they wound up playing in the semifinals? Valley. Mm-hmm. And wound up losing to Valley. Valley playing in the tournament for the first time, lost uh, fifteen and nine, uh, yeah, fifteen nine in the third set. Uh, Rochester won the second set. Had really, really, really a nice competitive match, and then Rochester lost. And and then right after that match was over, Rochester had to stay out there and play Northfield in the third place match, and lost that one twenty five seventeen twenty five nineteen. Again, uh, the the you know those two wins were great. Audrey Bollinger has been a bigger and bigger factor as a hitter. Uh, Avery Montel continues to impress. She's uh, continues to take big swings, uh, and then you know, um, and then the back row continues to improve with uh, Clevenger, Riley Clevenger, and of course Mia Hadeshell and uh, Hancock. Yeah, followed that up with a uh, a win on the yeah. road at the Trojan Trench. That's always a good place to get a win. A really nice win, twenty five nineteen, twenty three twenty five, twenty five twelve, and then finished it off twenty six twenty four in the fourth set. Yeah, it was great to. Uh, Coach Linnea Strasser was back for that Triton match. but me, And uh, on the court, they got Amara Waringa back. Amara uh, had missed the Pioneer match and the Tomahawk invite. She had a concussion, but it was back. And, boy, she makes a difference uh, as a hitter. And, boy, she's really got a nice serve, too. And that was as really as well as Rochester had served all year. When you talk about Dara Strasser, she gives you a left-handed serve, and then Bollinger, and then Waringa. So you've got... Um, Aubrey Wilson's got a nice serve as well, so you've got you got a lot of different serves. Um, so, and again, Rochester came up. That was also one of Dara Strasser's, I think, best matches as a hitter. I think she had seven or eight kills. Mm-hmm. So with her Strasser, Waringa, uh, Bollinger, you've got a lot of different. You got more offense, mm-hmm. and I think that that was really pulling out a nice win over a Triton team that has a lot of height with yeah. Maya Davis, Avery Veers. Uh, there's a freshman Savannah Hawley. Who is pretty tall? Of course, we I think we know her sister Sierra Holly already. Mm-hmm. Sierra is a very good libero on that team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're sisters. I should, we should, we're assuming they're sisters. And then uh, uh, Kennedy Howard's some more height. So that was a really nice win to win at the Trojan Trench. And then they went to Tippecanoe Valley last. Or they went to Culver Academy last night and lost 25-18, 25-22, Culver Academy, a really good program. They think they won three straight sexuals, and they're pretty young actually. Only, mm-hmm. Culver Academy has only two seniors. So, but uh, again, a tough, tough to play at uh, Fleet Gymnasium. Yeah, they're always a tough program. Yeah, just, just glad we don't have to face them, you know, more than once a year. So, right, they they always seem to have the uh, zebras number they did last year at home as well. So, yeah, uh, got a couple next week. Uh, first, home two, ver- first two conference matches: yeah, home, home with Lewis Cass on Tuesday night and at Peru on Thursday. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see Lewis Cass struggle a little bit. So. See how they can do against right, the Right, graduated uh, Kings. a lot from last year. Obviously, they've got uh, the uh, freshman Presley Johnson, who's a nice player, and Ava Hubner, mm-hmm. who we're very familiar with. Lewis Cass beat Rochester last year when they played in Walton. Now they've got to come to Rochester. I'm sure the ladies ease remember that loss. Yeah. And then uh, at Peru, uh, you know, a Peru team that's uh, been struggling a little bit. Yeah. All right, let's take another quick break here. We'll come back. We'll talk some more Rochester Zebras when we get back here talking sports with Val. 4C Health is a community mental health center that serves 14 counties in North Central Indiana, including Fulton County. We offer an expansive list of behavioral health and crisis care services to best fit your needs. 
We strive to give you the best care that is compassionate, collaborative, and competent. Whatever you are going through, you're not alone, and we are here to help. Check out our website at 4chealthin.org to learn more or call us at 1-800-552-3106. Mike's Trash is your local provider for a variety of trash removal and dumpster services to Rochester and the surrounding areas. From residential to commercial, and even for seasonal lake residents, Mike's Trash's reliable staff can help you find the right fit for your trash removal needs. To find a list of our services, visit us online at www.mikestrashllc.com, in-store at 824 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-6429. We started looking at California, Nevada, Oregon, Colorado, Exactly. And we simply could not find yes. anything that was affordable that had a campus like this. We think of it as we're giving up our community, our home, and you're not. I always wanted to come here after retirement, and now I have my twin and his wife and my cousins around me, and it's just wonderful. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a Bell game Friday afternoon as we get ready to go. Week two, the football season coming up here after we conclude. Little girls soccer here, Val. Rough trip over to Wabash for the ladies as they lose three to one to the Apaches. Still, uh, you know, still trying to put things together. They're a very young team and. Mm -hmm. Numbers, you know, we saw that one game got canceled. Uh, I, we didn't know if there was an injury or illness, but, uh, you know, not able to play against Bremen. But, um, you know, they're, they're putting up more goals, yeah, right. getting more attempts than they, they did last year. So things are moving in the right direction. Right. Players like Kelsey Walker and Izzy Hook have really added some offense to this team. And, you know, they're pretty experienced along the back line with uh, Audrey Wagner and Skyla Mitchell. But, yeah, again, they, they don't – again, they – they're just so low on numbers, they can't make many subs, and you always worry about them. How well will they hold up during a game? Yeah, and it's not going to get any easier for them. They got to go on the road to Trinity tomorrow. That's a very good squad, and you're playing at their place. Right, a top 10 team in Class 1A and playing yeah. at their place, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, they host Logan Sport on Tuesday. Uh, Logan Sport's always a solid team. Yeah, they've been steadily improving over the last few years. They've been doing very well right and then they mm -hmm. go to culver on thursday we're going to have that one here on rtc yeah uh, culver team that has really come out of the gate very impressive yeah <laughs> it's still i can't get over it i mean you think that uh mm -hmm. graduating your all-time leading goal scorer and then you have freshmen that are just coming in and taking taking off right where uh, giselle left off yeah <laughs> so it's crazy so yeah. yeah looking forward to that one uh on the boys side of things um boy they're they're doing a really good job here to start the season. Yeah, uh, you know, on uh, you know they were supposed to play Louisville on Tuesday. That game got pushed back to Wednesday because of the heat, mm -hmm. and they wind up winning three to nothing. Rabour Tindy had a goal, and Spencer Back has scored twice. Uh, so again, that was you know Laville, boy Laville played hard. They were pesky, but again the the zebras kind of their count kind of get their counter game going. And played much, you know, really had worked on their defense since that casting game and really had have improved defensively just in the last week or so since we've seen them. Uh, again, part of, that, part of that was getting Dakota Burden back, a veteran defender. And now you, they have more depth in the defense so they can make some subs if they need to. Jonas Kaiser continues to get better. Yeah. And then, uh, boy, Grant Bailey is just a great defender, and especially with his speed. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can get... You know he he can almost he helps with that counter game because he can just dribble up the field and set up his teammates. Again, this team plays just a lot faster than they have in previous years, and I think mm. that's a big factor. And the Harrington brothers, you can, they're kind of yelling at each other, you know, <laughs> uh, Aiden and goal and Braden in the back, and they're both kind of newcomers to soccer. They're both seniors, but they really have picked up the game well. Yeah, 
I think that's a tribute to Coach Backus uh, that they're playing faster. I think they're understanding what they're supposed to be doing. And once you stop thinking and just start yeah. playing, that's that's when things start happening, you know, in a good way for right. you. I believe Laville came into that game undefeated. Yeah. yeah. So it was a nice win. Yeah. And then an even better win in Winona Lake uh, last night as they beat Lakeland Christian one to nothing on a goal by Carlos Placencia mm-hmm. on a direct kick. Yeah, that's a typically a pretty good squad over there too yeah. for Lakeland. Yeah. Right. So that was that's a very nice win. And again. Rochester was so many scoring options. I mean, a, you know, Bacchus was really more of a defender in previous years, now playing up front. We haven't even talked about Wyatt Davis, who's been – yeah, he, had, he hasn't scored a goal this week, but they haven't needed him to. And Wyatt brings I – mean, He's assisted on several. Right, but he's mm-hmm. – yeah, I mean, uh, after the casting game, Coach Bacchus was like, Wyatt should have had six assists instead of mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. So he's been a big factor. But we'll get, now, now their biggest challenge yet is coming – Tomorrow, as they travel to Trinity Greenlawn, Trinity's ranked number 18 in Class 1A. So they okay. talked about their girls' team a lot. Their boys' team is very good, also. Uh, I think they've got a. I think they have a Division One prospect on that team. Oh wow! Uh, so that that'll they'll be tough. And then, you know, another tough game at Wabash on Tuesday on a turf field. Mm-hmm. So we will see how they do there. The, the Apaches have been tough mm-hmm. uh, to the Zebras. So this is you know this, the the schedule continues to get tougher for them. Uh, but again, they've they've been they've been equal to it. So yeah, uh, see how they 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 battle. But again, with Bacchus, Tindy, Placencia, and Davis, four guys who can score. That's really impressive. Yeah, uh, cross country got off, uh, got their season going down at Logan Sport. And the uh, Jacob Graff and Allison Calloway continues to do what Allison Calloway does. Well, and yeah, she's she's really gotten even better. I mean, sixth place, twenty one oh one. To start the year, we've talked about the the Logansport course. It's not known for its fast times, but mm-hmm. I, I went up to Allison afterwards. I said, "What do you, do you like this course?" And she goes, "Yeah, I think it's a great course." And I, she goes, "I don't think it's a slow course." <laughs> I said, "I think you I think you made it look fast." I, I you know I she she you know you can tell she's really improved. I thought she was going to get under twenty one, which would have been I mean again she she didn't she never got under twenty two until last year's regional. Hmm. She almost got under twenty one and meet one of the year. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is a tough place to run. I mean, there's right. there's some rolling hills and a lot of time in the woods and up. Yeah, right. When you go into the woods, you go uphill into the yeah, woods. Yeah, you're going so, around a corner too. And yeah, going up a, yeah, and a lot of thick grass too, and that berry yeah. patch is. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yeah, it's not one of the faster courses out there. And if you looked at the times, I you know again there were only one girl got under twenty, only uh, so yeah it was. It was not a particularly fast race, so Allison is just in top form. Um, Brooklyn Chandler, I think, ran 24-24, something around there. Uh, Cadence Bradley's back. She missed all of track season due to some injuries last year, so good to have her back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Emma Bradley's a new freshman. They ran her in the JV race, but it does not look like Rochester will have a complete team yet. Okay. Uh, boy, but I think they were dealing with an injury uh, also, so maybe they'll get to five at some point. The boys... They do not look like they'll get to five this year. Uh, but I wanted to give a shout-out to Reese Johnson, um, 35th place, 1841. He's a minute faster now than he was a year ago at, the, at this time. Good. So, yeah. you know, Reese's goal is to get into the – I know his goal is to break 18, and he's, he's pr- you know, again, that, that's a good start. Again. Yeah. Uh, Tennis-wise, the yeah. – uh, We should mention no meet tomorrow for the for Rochester – Next meet is next Saturday at Casting. At Casting, the big meet down yep. there. Yep. The uh, the tennis team they uh, continue their domination of the John Glenn invite, winning the uh, third uh, in a row. Right to beat uh, beat John Glenn five zero, then beat Knox five zero. So uh, Tanner Reinerts did not lose a game in two matches six zero six zero in both of his matches, and nobody from Rochester lost a set. So they uh, it was quick and dirty. They got they got down to business, and they they're they're continuing to play really well. Uh, again, Brady Morgan has played outstanding at two singles. He has, uh, you know, he he has really picked it up. Um, three singles. Jack Reffitt had a tough loss to Triton. Uh, comes back and wins both of his matches at John Glenn, and the doubles teams keep picking it up as well. Yeah, and Brady's playing singles for the first time, right? He's been right. been on doubles the previous Brady two years. Brady and Jack are both playing singles for the first time. Yeah. And then uh, follow that up with another win, it looks like. With a win over Twin Lakes, 3-2 yeah. on Monday. That was that late add to the schedule. Reinerts won at one uh, singles, and then they swept the doubles matches. 
Great job by Wade Bowers and Harrison Dunwoody at One Doubles. Harrison has changed his hair color. He's gone from the gold to like a turquoise. <laughs> okay. For those of you wondering, but yeah. there's, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a mood ring, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then at two doubles, uh, boy, Carter Meredith and Ashton Musselman, they're going to be pretty formidable at two doubles. Yeah. Because it's rare that you have a team that with that much experience. Two juniors playing two doubles. That's a that's a good that's a good doubles team. They're going to yeah. win some matches. Yeah. And then they went to McConaughey on Wednesday and won 5-0. Uh, McConaughey, really low on numbers. I don't think they even had a team last year. They do have a team this year, but they only have six kids. So they had a forfeit three singles. So Jack Reffa got the night off. Uh, Reinerts won at one one singles. The doubles mat, du- the doubles teams rolled again. And Brady Morgan pulled out a nice win, 6-3, six, 6-4 six, at two singles. Uh, Brady's a guy, he's, he's just pesky. He just keeps the ball in play. He doesn't make errors. He doesn't beat himself. And uh, he's really good. You know, I, I interviewed Brady afterwards. He goes, I, I hate to lose more than I love to win. And you can see he kind of has that attitude on the court. Yeah. And it's really been, uh, again, the, the Zebras just playing really well. I mean, you know, they had that loss to Triton, and, but they won four in a row since. They're 5-1 and one on the year and now 1-0 and oh in conference play. Big conference game coming up with the uh, Tigers coming to town next week. Right. they got to go to North Judson on Tuesday, but then Peru comes here on Thursday. Well, see, North Peru did graduate a lot from last year, but Coach Sane does such a great job. They they always seem to reload, don't right. they? Right. I mean, they always <laughs> seem to have kids who yeah. are playing 12 months a year. So we'll see how they do. But that, that that's a big one. That's going to, uh, again, and, of course, Peru is not only a conference opponent, but they're, that's where the sectional is. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's uh, a big, you know, uh, in, you know who's going to send a message, I think, in that one. Yeah. And, of course, you know, uh, in, you know TRC, uh, and of course, uh, uh, TRC superiority is going to be uh, at, on the line. I think Manchester is going to be; uh, they're going to have a say in that as well. Moving yeah. on later, girls' golf just uh, continues to roll. Right, third place with a 344 at the Warsaw Invite, finished behind only Homestead and or Carroll and Homestead. <laughs> Those are slightly bigger schools. <laughs> right, uh, Homestead ranked number eight and Carroll ranked number thirteen, but it was actually Carroll who won the tournament. Hmm. But still, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. sl- yeah, slightly bigger schools, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, again, uh, Olivia Bailey shot a 77 at Stonehenge. That's not that's not an easy course. Yeah. And to shoot 77 and an 85 for Molly Moore and 86 for Ava Thomas. But Molly to shoot an 85 on that course, that's tough. A 96 for Lexi Hawes uh, and I think a 103 for Laney McGonis. Yeah. You know, we, we, we heard about Molly Moore last year, and, and you know, she was managing the team, right, mm-hmm. as an eighth grader, and we heard yeah. about her ability, and we're like, eh, we'll see how it goes, but she has really had a great start to her high school career. Yeah. They were supposed to travel to Southwood for a tournament uh, on Monday. With Man- it was supposed to Manchester and North Miami were also supposed to be there, so it was supposed to be a four-way. That got canceled due to the heat. Too hot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was a little warm. <laughs> yeah, so they went. So uh, they went to Peru last night. I was at Rock Hollow for this. It was a three-way match, with Northfield Rochester shot a 167, Northfield a 212, and Peru a 216. Ava Thomas was the low lady zebra. She shot a 38, had a birdie on the par five sixth hole. Uh, Olivia Bailey had a 39. Lexi Hawes, you know Lexi, she is so Val. Don't follow me. I'm playing bad. Lexi shoots a 42, <laughs> the best nine-hole round of her career. Yeah. She's she's like the Lou Holtz. At, at Rock Hollow, too. At, at Rock Hollow, oh. she shoots a 42. And then, well, I'm playing so bad. And then she hits she, from 200 yards away from the – she she puts pulls out a five iron and puts it within 20 feet of the cup. Well, <laughs> I mean, she's, she's really coming on. She's having a great year in a 42. And then Lily Chips had a 63 – or Molly Moore had a 48, so uh, it's kind of a rough night for Molly. And then Lily Chips had a 63. Lily filling in for Laney McGonis, who was at her, um, I think her brother graduated from basic training. Oh, so, oh. so no Laney last night, but uh, Lily did fine. But a 167. Uh, Piercy Dyer of Peru, she was the medalist with a 36. Okay. So again, she's outstanding, but the Peru doesn't have the depth that Rochester does. Again, the it's a, a lot, you know. Obviously, the 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 one two for Rochester is great, but their depth is good too. Mm-hmm. 
Still a busy week coming up here for the Z's as they uh, they host an invite tomorrow and yeah got some uh, some meets coming up next week as well. Right, the invite tomorrow. You got South Bend St. Joe coming to town, Logansport, uh, Culver Academy. Those yeah. are three really should be tough schools. We don't know about. Uh, I think th- I was talking with Chad Thomas. He thinks Culver Academy hasn't played a tournament yet this year. He thinks because they come in late they start school late yeah so it's possible they haven't played a tournament or at least, okay. their, a, their, or at least their a team hasn't played a tournament yet so yeah. we will see uh but it's it's gonna be a pretty formidable competition yeah shout out to my niece kendall she's uh playing number five singles on uh or singles <laughs> she's playing number five for logan sport uh, mm-hmm. as a freshman so mm-hmm. that's a pretty big accomplishment there right so and then yeah they, they will and then uh again it's t- at Valley on Tuesday, but of course that's at Round Barn as well. And McConaughey will join, and that means Daisy Williams from McConaughey, the three-time defending TRC medalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she shot a, Daisy Williams shot a 32 on a, in a at a nine-hole round. Oh wow! Earlier uh, last, this past week. Wow. She is, is that four under. I think so. Yeah. yeah. She wow. is. She's been, yeah, I mean, she has been awesome from since day one as a freshman. She's a senior now, and so she will be matched up with Olivia Bailey and Savannah Miller from Valley, who's had a great year. Must see TV right there. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rochester will host Lewis Cass on Wednesday. All right. All right, let's take another quick break here, come back and talk some more sports with Val here in just a moment. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Pace Setters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're buying or selling and your listing is commercial, residential, or investment, our agents are able to show any type of real estate that is active on the market. Visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net or call now at 574-223-5000. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest in genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Friday Bell game afternoon, and uh, let's talk about Valley here. Val, we talked about uh, Rochester. Let's talk a little bit about the Vikings. The uh, they got off to a good start with the uh, week one win over the Wabasi Warriors, and boy, it was a lot of uh, a lot of this and a lot of big plays for the Vikings. Right, I think that was kind of. We were wondering about would this be kind of a grinded out type of offense or would it be a big play type of offense? It was a big play type of offense. <laughs> it was last Friday for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it it just amazes me talking about some of the kids that graduated for Valley last year mm-hmm. and and to see them come back and you know just a play like this, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't expect that from a young team that doesn't have a lot of experience, but boy, they were able to to make those kind of plays all night long against Wabasi. Right. And then Yeah, 
yeah, again, Parker was sensational. Omandi was great. Um, but they could all, you know, they have guys like Brandon Stiles and Wyatt Hart who are, can kind of, you know, who are experienced running backs as well. Maybe they don't quite have the speed that Parker and Omandi have, but they're reliable running, reliable, really solid running backs who got a chance to play last year. And again, look at Parker, he's, West Parker, he's just so smooth that he's just kind of galloping out there and, boy, nobody's catching him. He was, you know, you know, last, you know, I was talking with Stephen Moriarty, he goes, you know, Wes, he was just kind of focused on defense last year. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't really get a chance to show what he could do. Well, this is what he can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you have four carries, and how many yards did you say he had? 149 <laughs> and three touchdowns. Wow. So that's, that's, the good, that's the good news if you're a Rochester fan. He got tackled once. Yeah. <laughs> once. So... You know, we kind of talked about the game from a uh, Rochester mm -hmm. standpoint. For, for Valley, you know, how do you attack this Rochester team? Um, you know, do you keep kind of going with that same style where you uh, kind of pull it in and try and grind it out, or do you try to, you know, keep the ball in the air and, and see what you can do? I, I, I think you I think you, you, try, you try basically the same style and hope that your speed can win out. Um, I'm I'm more interested in this game from from Valley standpoint from a defensive standpoint because they know they know that Rochester is going to run the wing tee and they they know the same those plays but how quickly will they be able to get off the ball those defensive linemen need to occupy the Rochester offensive linemen so Brock Durf and Grady Moriarty can do their thing at the linebacker core right um, talked with Ron Schaefer earlier this week he was he's very very impressed with Brock Durf I mean he is he was sensational in last year's Bell game and he is. He's even better because he he's so he's very studious about the game, and he's just always in the right position. And he, Schaefer was Coach Schaefer was talking about we've got to block the first level and then get to the second level and block block Brock Durf. Yeah. So he doesn't get involved. Yeah, it's from a defensive standpoint, it's almost like your your defensive linemen are blocking the offensive linemen yeah. almost to keep your your uh, linebackers clean. Right. If you can keep those guys clean and let them roam. Yeah. Yeah. Then they can fill those gaps yeah. and. Now the, yeah. the the next key is can Rochester get some big plays in the passing game? Mm -hmm. You know, last year they really again Carson Pollock was just a sophomore quarterback last mm -hmm. year, and Valley had a veteran secondary. I mean, they had <laughs> all state safety in Wade right, Jones. Right. They had Nate Parker playing back there. Uh, Rochester wasn't going to get many big plays in the passing game. Now you get a pretty young Valley secondary, though Parker has played there a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we might even see Phillips play. Uh, the defensive secondary as well as quarterback. Okay. So will the Valley defense give up big plays? Again, they placed Wawa C last week who attempted one pass the entire game. So we really don't know. It's kind of, we don't really know much about the Valley defensive secondary yet. Yeah. But again, Rochester, I think, is going to have a few more weapons in the passing game with Bowers and maybe Jewel, maybe, you know, maybe Garrett, maybe even Grant Clark will run a pattern at a tight end. Yeah, Parks is can play wide receiver. He had a nice catch last week, so I think the Valley secondary will be tested in this game. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of in game kind of you know games within the game kind of thing. Right. to kind of keep an eye on there for that. Right. And so. we talked about Gage Overby. He is again. He's he's going to be a big. He could be a big factor in this game because if it's you know it helps to run a two minute drill, knowing that you can maybe kick a forty yard field goal at the end of a half or mm -hmm. at the end of a game. Yeah, if you really need it. Yeah, yeah. Where Rochester, they've got to try for touchdowns if they run a two-minute drill. Yeah, and it sounds like you know the the weather may may be a factor. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. I know what two was it four years ago when we were over there that it was pretty nasty. Fifty-four to nothing. The the weather though. Oh, the weather. Uh, was it was it four years ago that the weather was so bad over there? The twenty game maybe, but. Uh, anyway, I just remember it, mm -hmm. even with the rain cover, the one camera almost uh, got fried because uh. it was raining so hard. Mm. I'd have to look at the film. Uh, mm. The uh, volleyball team, tough loss to uh, to Goshen in uh, five sets or is in it four, four sets. Yeah, in yeah. four sets. They, you know, they won the first set or, and then lost the next three, and that was coming off that second-place finish at the Tomahawk invite. Uh, again, it was interesting. Valley didn't know they'd be in the Tomahawk invite until about two weeks before the mm. Tomahawk invite. They'd been kind of on like a waiting list, and 
had been wanting to be in the tournament, and they got a call and said, you're in hmm. if you want a spot. And they said, absolutely. So they beat Wabash, they beat Winnemac in the pool play, and then they beat Rochester in the semifinals. Then they ran into a really, really good South Adams team uh, in the final loss, 25-12, 25-12. But that really, again, I you know, Coach John Hutton has really talked about creating a positive atmosphere with his team, and I, I really think he's doing that. It's a really athletic team. When you talk about Hadley Wise and Betty Shepard and Avery Wagner and Michaela Costello, um, it, it, uh, Jasmine uh, Fuller, uh, this is it's a pretty athletic team, and they've got a really athletic libero in Gabby Gonzalez, who's quick and just covers a whole bunch of court. But so we will see how they do in a in that 3A sectional this year. Obviously, in you know with Northwood, um, but I think they'll I think they'll do really well in the INSC. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. As they get started, but again, South Adams is really good. Like South Adams is so good, and this is how my brain works. I'm wondering how South Adams will do when when they play. I'm like, when will they play Southwood? Because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, if you think Southwood's just going to roll on to Worthen Arena, South Adams is going to have something to say about that. Yeah. They are loaded. Yeah, and they won that tournament three years in a row. And again, uh, so Valley, uh, they go to uh, uh, they go to that Powerball tournament at Plymouth. Uh, Tomorrow, okay, and then uh, they start host conference. Home, start conference play with a home match against Knox on Thursday. So they're doing they're doing two two matches with each conference. So it's a home and a home. All right, so they'll play ten conference matches. Yeah. So do they play them back to back or do they? No, it's going to spread out over the schedule. Okay, so kind of like Big Ten does with with basketball. Kind of, yeah, yeah. You don't just know wherever just, they land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wherever they okay. land. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's um, drop. Wanna, yeah, I just want to give a quick shout out to the boys tennis team. Beat North Jets in three to two. Beat Knox four to one. Good, good. Yeah. I saw they're still working on the courts. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was over there yesterday getting mm-hmm. things ready for the football game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the one team we were talking about are uh, five of our six teams getting big first uh, first week wins in football. The one team that didn't get the big first team uh, first week win was Caston. <laughs> We thought, you know, Carroll might be vulnerable with 17 kids graduating. Mm-hmm. Apparently they had a lot of kids behind them yeah, because they, they seemed to have reloaded. Yeah, they did. And, you know, Kasten got off to a good start. Jabez Yarber got, got off to, a, you know, I think eight carries for 36 yards. I mean, we talk about this Carroll team. They're, they're all about defense, defense, and more defense. But Yarber got off to a good start. And, boy, we talk about, we talk about Gavin Mollenkopf. How about his younger brother, Logan? First game as a freshman, had 68 yards receiving on – Four catches, so he, the Malenkov brother, is going to be quite a, quite a formidable duo in the cast and passing game. But really couldn't sustain that. It was, I think, it was thirty-five to six by halftime, or, and Carroll just continued to pull away and win fifty-five to six. Uh, the big issue right now for Caston is that, um, Landon Rigney is injured. Oh. He's got a leg. It's more of like a leg condition. Not so much a leg injury; it's like a leg condition. He's gonna have to have surgery, mm. but they're hopeful to have him back in about four weeks or so. Okay. So if they can get him back, that will give him. Then they'll have that running back duo with him and Yarber, mm-hmm. and that. But it's uh, and that'll help out, and that'll give him all, uh, more depth on defense as well. Yeah. I think the, the strength of Cast and in, in the de- on their defense is that linebacking group. But again, Carroll's got a lot of a lot of weapons, so. Uh, a rough night, but we'll see how the Caston does against North White tonight. Again, they beat North White 34-28 in last year's sectional. That was a North White team that lost 14-8 to Taylor in their first game and gave up over 200 yards passing. Yeah, they graduated so, a lot of their offense they, from last year. Right, and Coach Quaysbarth's son, mm-hmm. who I think had 330 yards of total offense in that sectional game, mm-hmm. 180 passing, 150 rushing. Mm-hmm. He's graduating, so yeah. I think they're, they're just w- weapons-wise, they don't have the weapons yeah. that they did last year. So let's see how Caston does at home tonight. Yeah, home opener for the uh, Comets down at the Crater. So mm-hmm. uh, Volleyball, you know, we, we kind of figured, you know, a, a lot of new pieces and mm-hmm. a lot of new girls in, in new places. And with the graduations that they had, uh, they're they're struggling a little bit, but uh, they did pick up a win at the Tomahawk. Yeah, and beat Winnemac in, their, uh, in one of their place round matches. So they went 1-3 and three and finished in 10th place. And then they had to play. They had to play Peru in their last match of the Tomahawk, and then they played Peru again on Monday night at the Crater, mm-hmm. and lost in four. Uh, won the first set, then lost the next three, 
And then they had to go to Royal Center last night and lost 25-2, 25-12, 25-14 to a pioneer team that has really been coming on quickly. Mm-hmm. Again, we talk about uh, cast with, uh, you know, the, uh, with Maddie Douglas and McKenna Middleton kind of running a two-setter system. Uh, Grace Colvin, I'm really excited for her future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they go to that Tri-County Invite tomorrow, which they do every year. And then uh, they travel to Argus on Tuesday night. Yeah, so an opportunity there, Argus. You know, getting some uh, a little bit of a taste of the Hoosier North Conference. Yes, and probably not liking how that tastes so far. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so Caston going to Argus. So yeah. All right, let's take another quick break here. Come back. We'll talk some more sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins & Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Rochester Ford is your go-to for quality vehicles and automotive repairs. With our vast selection of vehicles to choose from, we're sure to put you behind the wheel of your dream car without compromising your bank account. And with every vehicle we sell, we offer a free lifetime oil change policy to be sure that your ride stays in tip-top shape even after you leave our lot. Come see us today at 119th East 4th Street, Rochester, or visit us online at rochesterfordonline.com. Fulton County REMC is proud to be offering great opportunities and programs for our youth in the upcoming year. These programs prioritize balancing fun with education all in one unforgettable adventure. Right now admissions are open for Camp Kilowatt for any youth currently in 6th grade and for the youth tour for any current junior year high schooler. To learn more about these trips visit fcremc.coop and check out our youth page or call us at 574-223-3156. New Holland Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's talk a uh, little Argus Dragons here, Val. The, uh, the boys' soccer team. Let's go. Uh, let's start with the girls' soccer team here. A little bit of a rough start for the girls, um, losing to Jimtown in their most recent contest, four to one. Yeah, got a goal last night from uh, Hannah Willis, uh, but uh, yeah, now oh two and one on the season, but they're. Three games have been against Trinity, Greenlawn, Plymouth, and Jimtown. Uh, and that was after that game against Elkhart Christian earlier in the week was postponed because of the heat and moved back to September 19th. So it's been a tough start. I think the schedule will ease up on Tuesday night when they travel to Oregon Davis. But then, then next Thursday, Bremen comes to town, and that, that's, an, that's another top-10 opponent. Uh, and then next Saturday, Culver comes to town, mm-hmm. and that will be, you know, Culver... Uh, they remember last year's sectional. Mm-hmm. They lost Argus in last year's sectional, and they will be, I'm sure they'll be ready for that game, so we'll see how they do. Yeah, the first time that's going to be a conference game, too. So yeah, yeah. I can't remember the last time that those two teams met in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Right, and it'll be a boys-girls doubleheader. Okay. So at uh, Eugene Snyder Field. So okay. Yeah, again, uh, yeah, curious to see how this Argus team does. Kind of a young, uh, youngish uh with the exception maybe of Morgan Barkas, kind of youngish in the front line. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be curious to see how they, they handle Culver's speed uh, when they play them. Bremen, Bremen speed and Culver speed. You know, the one curiosity I had reading the uh, stats from that Jimtown game and something that you don't normally see from our Argus team, but they, they really did outshoot. I don't remember the exact number, but they outshot Jimtown mm-hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. But they ended up losing. It's something you just don't see a whole lot of out of an Argus team that they yeah. – they actually outshoot their opponent, but then, you know, actual score, they lose. Yeah. So, yeah. 
as curiosity there, see how that uh, progresses. Uh, hopefully they can get things right with uh, a trip over to uh, Hamlet. Yeah. And then on the boys' side, uh, good win for the uh, Argus Dragons as they start their Hoosier North Conference play with a uh, 7-2 win over the uh, Comets. Well, getting Luke Stoltz back matters. Mm-hmm. He means a lot, and they beat... You know, that casting game, it was a 2-0 game at halftime, and they kind of blew it open in the second half and won 7-2. Uh, you know, Stoltz had a goal. Keegan Stanley's really been coming along. Uh, he's He gives them some more scoring punch in that front line. Uh, I know Kyle Penn has been playing kind of more of a facilitator role. Uh, this is a you know this is a team that's gonna uh, you know they, they started off the year at Plymouth and that's a tough opening game but I think they're gonna be this is gonna be a team that will they'll be playing its best soccer by the time October comes around. Yeah, yeah, they they know how to play the play the game and mm-hmm. got a few pieces that they just need to make sure that they fit together. Yeah, and again you're you're bringing along a a, a freshman keeper as well. Then, you know, an 8 nothing win over Winnem. You know, the Belcar Christian game was postponed because the Heat then an 8 nothing win over Winnemac uh, last night. Yeah. Uh, the volleyball team uh, got a uh, welcome to the H-neck uh, the yeah. other night as they traveled to uh, Pioneer and the, the Panthers handled their... Uh, right, lost to Pioneer 25-7, 25-8, 25-7 in a match that lasted about 45 minutes. Mm. And then went to Triton last night and lost 25-9, 25-21, 25-11... Uh, this is a uh, you know an Argus team that's young. They've only got one senior with Lexi Schenkel, uh, so it's kind of uh, I think Kinsley Kelly is doing a nice job on the front line from what from what I saw when I saw I get to meet Coach Tinsman and talk to her just a, a little bit. She's uh, you know she coached the middle school team last year and did a nice job and so kind of the administration kind of approached her and, and asked her if, hey would you like to coach the varsity and. So it's just trying to implement her system. Yeah. And just tra- we've talked about the stability that this program needs. Yeah, yeah. They, you can't go through four coaches in five years and mm-hmm. expect things just to, you know, take off right out of the gate. So hopefully yeah. they can get things turned around there. Right. They actually have a, a home match tonight on a Friday night as they travel or uh, travel to Lakeland Christian. Yeah. And then uh, we mentioned that home match with Caston coming up on Tuesday and then another home conference match with North Judson on Thursday. Yep. Cavaliers got a nice win, start the season, regular season win for the first time in a couple of years uh, yeah. against an Attica team that you know has been struggling. I think that was 29 in a row that they've lost, but uh, a win's a win, and, and it was a big one at that. Yeah, they beat them 42 to nothing, and I made a tweet last Friday night, and I, I just tweeted it because I was watching the video le- Friday, le- like late Friday night as I was watching the video. I almost... I, I just started. I just started laughing watching the video because that Braylon Jackson touchdown was amazing. And so I said, I think I tweeted, Braylon Jackson is a freshman from Culver. Remember the name. Mm-hmm. And that got as much reaction to a Culver-related tweet as I think maybe I've ever had. And I think part of it is because we know Braylon's family so well, mm-hmm. and partly because Culver saw what we saw, which that touchdown was incredible because a he's a freshman. And B, it wasn't just the speed he showed, but it was like the vision that he showed. It was kind of basically like a bubble screen. I mean, technically, the uh, Jonas McEwen just took the snap and kind of pitched it forward. It, but it, it was a pass. I mean, it was mm-hmm. a Poor forward pass. pass. But that that Braylon would have the the sense to see the field, break the tackle, and then turn on the speed. <laughs> that was just a special play. And so I tweeted about it. But just. To say Braylon is he was just one of many standouts in the game. Drake Zorich was blocking everybody, mm-hmm. and he was. Drake, I mean, Drake. It was funny. Just I, I just had my eyes on Drake. He was like pumping his fists. He was like, he looked like the ultimate warrior out there. It's like, yeah, yeah. And you could just see. I mean, this team. You could just tell this team has spent a lot of time in the weight room. For one <laughs> thing, they, they're they're just a lot bigger on the line. And you put him out there with uh, Robert Evans at Zorich at left guard and Robert Evans at right guard. That's a pretty formidable duo of guards, and you've got Caudill at left tackle and Vela at right tackle. What that offensive line looked a lot better last last Friday. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the Ultimate Warrior because he actually grew up not too far from Attica. Oh, in Crawfordsville. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, that's that's just weird. I'm like, wow, that's a that's a okay. heck of a because I'm pretty sure you didn't know that, but. It's going to be a big test, obviously. West Central coming to town tonight. They are coming off of their week one loss to Winamax. So right. 
can the Cavaliers keep that going? Well, I saw. You know, I looked at the West Central video against Winnemac. I mean, they've got this Drea Villarreal. Mm-hmm. He had 177 yards rushing, but the rest of the team had like. The rest of the team had like 40 yards of total offense. Mm-hmm. So if you can stop Villarreal, you can stop the team. But Villarreal's tough. He's again with West Central. They they always run that option, and they always have a good fullback. Mm-hmm. And Villarreal, he's who he barely carried the ball last year from what I could tell by the stats. He's their fullback this year. He's tough. He can hit the hole hard. Culver's got to be ready to stop him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know, Jonas McEwen is not only the quarterback, but he's a really good safety. He's a really good tackler. Both McEwen brothers are the two top tacklers on the team. They've got to be there and stop. If they can keep Villarreal from getting going, that's going to be big. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, again, Culver's got a chance to win this game. They've got a good history against West Central. Mm-hmm. Just did, lost to them last year. Yeah. The uh, Lady Cavs volleyball team, you know, we have some pretty big expectations for Coach Barrett and her squad this year, and, and they have not disappointed starting off here with uh, six wins. Yeah, 6-2 and two overall, 2-0 two and oh in the conference with wins over OD and Caston. Um, this past week, you know, they lost to South Central at home on Monday at John R. Nelson, won the first set, then lost the next three. That kind of a heartbreaker because that would have been so that would have been so big if they if they could have pulled that one out mm-hmm. but then really rebounded nicely beat tri township on wednesday swept them in three swept west central in three mm-hmm. i think west central that's a nice win yeah yeah tri township's not a terrible team either i mean mm-hmm. and you know south central is what south central is i mean yeah they went undefeated until the regional last year so right. yeah they graduated some kids but you know they they got uh, they got some winnable games coming up. You know they go to Winnemac and to Triton. That's right. going to be an interesting one over I mean, the trench. You know, yeah, I, I think they should be favored at Winnemac. Yeah, and then they got to go to at to Triton on Thursday. That's going to be an interesting match because Triton's going to have a height advantage with you know those girls we mentioned Davis, Veers, Howard, and Savannah Holly. But I think Culver's they've got an experience advantage with Bryn Barron and Livy Overmeyer and um, and Pew. I mean I. Mm-hmm. I really like this. You know, I, I'm really curious to see how how Culver how how far they can take this. I I, I really think this is going to be a legit team that's going to be a contender in in the in the in the Hoosier North. Yeah. Uh, real quick here, let's talk a little girls' soccer. As the Lady Cavs yeah, are, we need uh, to be talking about them. They're four and zero. Oh. Yeah. Uh, three to one win over North Miami on Saturday. A four to two win over Demont Christian. That North Miami game was a tight game. It was one one late, and then Ava McCune scores twice, and they yeah. win three to one. And then, boom, McCune, a hat trick in the first half against DeMott Christian. It's always a good DeMott Christian team, and they win 4-2. to two. Of course, that, uh, that North Miami game, a conference game for the Cavs. Yeah. So that was a big, even bigger win for them. Yeah, so a home game with South Bend Riley tomorrow, Saturday. Then they travel to Washington Township. Uh, and then that home game with Rochester that we talked about. And then that road game against Argus that we talked about next Saturday, the yeah. 7th. Yeah, another another monster game for them coming up there at uh, Eugene Snyder Field. And they've played at Eugene Snyder Field a few times, but mm-hmm. just never regular season, never conference game. So, see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, looking, yeah. looking forward to that one for sure. So, all right, let's take another quick break here. We'll come back and uh, talk some more sports with Valley here in just a moment. Stop on into Giretti's place for breakfast, lunch, or to get your day started with a cup of coffee from our signature coffee bar. Located at 701 Main Street, Giretti's Place is the perfect spot for a bite to eat in downtown Rochester. Come on by Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. To see a full menu, visit us at www.girettisplace.com or call us at 574-223-7101. Thanks to the generous donors, the Fulton County Community Foundation has given over $19 million in grants and scholarships to our local communities. Grants received at the Community Foundation help families send their children to preschool, provide transportation, fund scholarships, local community events, and so much more. Call 574-223-2227 or visit NICF.org to see how your donation can benefit your community. Looking for a way to show off your students' art talents? Enter them in for Fulton County REMC's 2025 Cooperative Calendar of Student Art Contest. Any student from grades K-12 through can enter with an unlimited amount of submissions. Artwork can be submitted by parents, teachers, youth leaders, or other groups as a class project. Students do not have to be consumers of a rural electric cooperative. To learn more, visit www.fcremc.coop/youth or call at 574-223-3156. 
Rochester Iron and Metal Incorporated is a full-service metal recycling and processing center. We pay cash for your scrap metal and work hard to make sure that every bit is recycled properly. Rochester Iron and Metal has been serving North Central Indiana for over 50 years, and we have dedicated ourselves to providing our customers with the best service, the best product, and the best prices anywhere. Stop on by at any of our 14 locations or visit us online at www.rochesteriron.com or call us at 574-223-4300 to learn more. Welcome back here talking sports with Val, and let's talk a little Pioneer Panthers. Val, the uh, Panthers on the road to start their season off. They actually have two road games that are at, at Knox tonight, but they uh, started off with a big win against uh, Cass County rival Lewis Cass, 42-14. Uh, we thought that uh, Pioneer might have a, a chance to win this one, but boy, they didn't just win it. They they uh, took control and, and really put a little bit of a whooping on the uh, Kings. Absolutely. I mean, that was a great win. Noah Van Meter, we had talked about him kind of having to fill in that fullback spot for the graduated Rylan Toloza while well, he had 117 yards rushing in his, basically his first start as a varsity fullback. And then what a game for Micah Rands, 95 yards rushing and four touchdowns. And he returned a punt, 68 yards for a touchdown. So five touchdowns on the night for Micah. Not boy, a, hel- a healthy Micah Rands matters. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Pioneer. And boy, you know that's gonna, that's only gonna open up more opportunities, I think, for that for the halfbacks as the halfbacks, you know, gain their gain some more experience. Yeah, but they got to go up to Knox tonight. A uh, little bit different uh, atmosphere up there and a different feel. It's but it's a non-conference game now. Right and. I think the last two years, Knox has beaten Pioneer by a combined score of 103 to 26, mm. and now they got a Knox team that's probably a little bit angry coming off the way they played in a 42-21 loss to North Judson last week. Yeah, I don't but think having said be... that, the Knox, you know, Knox, they had trouble stopping the run against North Judson. Cole Wilcox of North Judson ran for 275 yards and three touchdowns. Whew. Can can Rands and Van Meter have that type of success? Yeah. And meanwhile, on the other, if you flip sides of the ball. Miles McLaughlin of Knox has moved from running back to quarterback. He's mm-hmm. already Knox's all-time leading rusher. Now he's playing quarterback this year. Mm-hmm. In a in a Russ Radke coached offense, the quarterback is just another running back. I mean, you're, yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see how how much will he pass. He did, he did have a little success passing. He looked comfortable passing. Uh, but how will Knox block Eli Guffey? Eli Guffey was everywhere against Lewis Cass. Twelve tackles, four tackles for loss, a sack, two forced fumbles. That's not a bad night. I mean, he, he. I remember seeing some. Uh, sometimes there was a guy there wearing number four that would do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not not happened a whole lot since then. Yeah, I mean, Eli Guffey is a force as a linebacker. Well, Knox had to double team him. I yeah. Mean, they, they believe me. I mean, you know, they they will know where Eli Guffey is on the field. Yeah. Uh, if they want to get if they want to get their running back if they want to get McLaughlin going to get Jake Conroy going so. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think Pioneer's going to come in with a nothing to lose attitude. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah I'm really excited and and again. Uh, you know, Pioneer's offensive line has just gradually gotten better as yeah, well. So. Yeah, and and they do have some size there on that offensive line. So I, I think that's yeah. something that'll help them obviously against a big knock. Want to give a shout out to Fletcher Fletcher Smith. Mm-hmm. He's been playing really well for Pioneer on the, both lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brady Price playing well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Coach Nyes really has the volleyball team. You know, we talked about obviously graduating those six girls like they did. Uh, you coming into this season, but boy. They have really taken this team. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got Kirsten Nice, the lone senior. Uh, she's kind of taken them under her wing, and, and they have really had a great start to their season. They, you know, they beat Rochester, and, they you know, Rochester had a match point in that match, and we were kind of wondering about, you know, that was coming off that, you know, that loss to Logansport and the, uh, in, in the Cass County Tournament Championship. And it's, okay, so how good is this Pioneer team? Are they going to... And they can have their ups and downs with the freshman. Well, they go to Franklin, the Franklin Central Invite, and they go three and one. I was amazed by that. that mm-hmm. Three and one at that tournament. Yeah, that's a four A school tournament, pretty much. The one team they lost to was Columbus North. Columbus North has two D one players on their team. One of them was going to Seton Hall. <laughs> who's six wow. four. Yeah. I mean, so no shame in losing that. And then you know, and then they they beat Argus. We mentioned that that was twenty five seven, twenty five eight, twenty five seven, and then Caston. You know, they beat Cast at the Cast County Tournament. They beat him even worse last night, 25-2, 25-12, 25-14. Uh, these, the three freshmen, Layla DeMond, Avery Layer, and Madison Schaefer are special. 
I talked with Rod Nice last night. He says that Madison Schaefer has a chance to be one of the best liberos he's ever coached. That's saying something. Yeah, that is saying something. <laughs> Cause, wow. Because you know he's talking. He, he said that he and Daryl Yeoman, his assistant coach, they've talked a little about about Schaefer. Like, is she a what is she? Is she a libero or is she a setter? Mm-hmm. And they're thinking and kind of. Coach Nice said, "I think she might be a libero, but Coach Yeoman's kind of." No, like she's leave her back there a libero. She's really good at that. You might want to just have her do that. And man, she's yeah. And boy, she's improved so much for just from the Cass County tournament. And she's a great server as well. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how Schaefer, Schaefer's role evolves over time. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. She's I mean, she's what like five two. Mm-hmm. But it's, it'll be interesting to see how her role evolves over time. But this team is, boy, are they coming on. Yeah, and uh, I'm really excited to see how good they can get, and we, you know, the, as tough as the Franklin Central tournament was, the Lafayette Central Catholic tournament is even tougher. They got Andrean and LCC, <laughs> and L- Linton Stockton waiting for him at LCC tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. If they do well there, that's really going to say a lot, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And then back to the Berry Bowl on Tuesday night for the rematch with Logan Sport. Yeah, that will be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go out on a small limb here and say that's gonna be a different result. I, yeah. I think this team has come a long way since that Cass yeah. County invite, even though it's only been a few weeks. Yeah, because remember <laughs> and remember they lost to Caston in the Cass County tournament final last year, and then came back and beat Caston when they met in conference play. Yeah, yeah. So that's just such an early tournament. I mean, it, it, right at the beginning of the season like that, and you know you can some sometimes you can have a little bit of a hiccup and. Mm-hmm. They proved that last year that it was just a hiccup. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, talk real quick here. Uh, the uh, cross country team was at the Jacob Graff, and of course, uh, you know, on the on the boys' side, you know, no surprise that uh, you know they would have uh, some pretty good results there. Yeah, Leighton Dot finished, I think, seventh overall in seventeen ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hay- Hayden Kempel of Clinton Prairie won it in fifteen forty nine. Wow. On that course, that's. It broke the course record, in fact. Did it? So uh, that was a good boys race. That was mm. a really good boys race. And consi- that course, that was. Um, but again, Pioneer just doesn't have quite the experience after Leighton Dot, mm. after graduating the kids they did. Elliot Cooper is coming on. But uh, again, it's going to be Leighton Dot who's going to be the front runner most of the year. Yeah. So, and then the girls, their top two girls are Avery Hasselby and Kylie Jamerson. Okay. Who are, I think they were, they were like two seconds apart. They they were running almost side by side most of the day. Yeah, uh, and golf had a couple and of matches. C- Cass County meet is tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Golf had a couple of meet uh, meets canceled. It looks like, but uh, yeah. they did get a win in against Winnemac. Two ten, two twenty, two ten, two twenty seven over Winnemac, and a forty for Mia McKeg. Yeah. And uh, at Caston on Tuesday, but of course that's basically a home. Yeah. Pond tournament View. at Pond View, and then they go on Thursday. They travel to Twin Lakes. Uh, that's of course is typical new country club. That's where their sectionals at. Benton Central will be there for to make it a three way. Yeah, that's coming up on Thursday. And our other football team that we uh, were talking about at the beginning that got the win, the Winnemac Warriors, picking up a big win against county rival West Central to start their season off. Yeah, I mean they, you know, again, Coach Burgess was he was enthusiastic after that uh, scrimmage against Rochester, and he showed why he should be because they beat West Central twenty four to sixteen. Addison Allen had a really good game. Xavier Adriano has made a lot of progress as a freshman quarterback. Um, and, again, defensively they held West Central to run 200 yards. One thing Win- Winnemac has got to cut down is cut down on the penalties, 11 penalties for 105 yards against Ooh, West Central. That's gotta, rough. Got to gotta cut that down uh, <laughs> as, they, as soon as they get into the meat of their schedule. Yeah, I mean, you talk about giving up 100 yards rushing to an opposing player, but 100 yards in penalties. Yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one. Right. They go to Frontier tonight. Frontier beat Clinton Prairie 36-26 last Friday. First time Frontier Frontier lost 11 in a row to Clinton Prairie. Mm-hmm. Finally beat them last night. A great start to the coaching career for Jack Barron. We remember Jack. Obviously, he's a Plymouth grad who had a really good career. We, we know his dad is a terrific coach. And now, now Jack's gotten into coaching as well. Okay, uh, yeah. Jack, yeah. I want to say, he's about 25 years old. He's got to be one of the younger coaches in the state. Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, I read an article in the Monticello paper about man, you know our coaches. You know he keeps. He's so enthusiastic and energetic, and he has. A, and he, he has us watching a lot of game film. So yeah. we'll see again. Uh, uh, Frontier's got a quarterback. I think his name is Reed Duncan, 
who has had 140 yards passing and another 100, or 140 yards passing, 110 yards rushing yeah. against Clinton Prairie. So he will be formidable. And they've got a kid named Jack Newton, who's a really strong junior running back. This will be an even bigger test for that Winnipeg defense. Yeah, and it's it's been a, a hot minute since those two teams have played. Obviously, used to be uh, conference rivals in the old Midwest Conference, but uh, yeah, you know the the new realignment with how things worked with the HNAC uh, kind of gave them that opening, and so heading over to Chalmers to to play yeah. for the first time yeah. since Last 2012? Time, 2014. 2014. Of course, the Hoosier North started in 2015. Yeah. Uh, last time when Mac played Frontier, when Mac won sixty-seven to nothing. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. If maybe, so we'll see if anybody from Chalmers remembers that. I yeah, imagine. yeah. But Jack, sure. Jack Barron doesn't. That's yeah, the key. Yeah. Um, volleyball. You know, we we knew they were going to probably struggle a little bit as they have a pretty young squad. But uh, Coach mm-hmm. Caston, you know, she's. She's working hard with them, going to get them going, but it's just yeah. a hard, hard struggle. Right, to get when, going. when 0-4 that North, the Tomahawk tournament, that was that was tough. You know, I thought they had a chance to beat Delphi in the 11th place match, but lost a tough three setter there, and then lost to North White. Did take the third set from North White last night, but wound up losing. And now they've got Culver coming to town, an experienced Culver team mm-hmm. uh, coming to Winnemac on Tuesday night. Soccer, um, you know, in the reworked um, Hoosier North, they're they're getting uh, kind of a little bit of taste of what the Argus Dragons soccer team is like in the regular season. Yeah, lost to a good Morgan Township team 10-0 and then lost to Argus 8-0. Those are two tough teams. Uh, again, had to travel to Gene, Eugene Snyder Field. That is a tough place for a visiting team to play. Yeah, yeah, they've been there before, but like we said with Culver, it's not been during the regular season. Yeah. So. so a home game with a you know another good team with Lakeland Christian coming to town on Tuesday, and then another conference game with North Miami on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quickly cross country. Yeah, girls were fifth, boys were ninth at the Jacob Graff invite. I had <clears throat> had a picture in the uh, my article. Avery Wegner and Caden Suber both finished in the top twenty on the girls side, and Logan Friedel and the boys in the top twenty on the boys side. Logan's we talked about Logan. He's a, another multi sport athlete, really good. A uh, really good athlete. Yep, and uh, you know, pretty young squad. We've talked about for the uh, girls' golf team, and they're you know they're struggling a little bit too, but yeah. uh, getting some uh, getting some results in. Yeah, a loss to Demont Christian, two nineteen to two thirty, and we mentioned that loss to Pioneer against Sierra Hashel, by far the most experienced player on the team. Yeah. So, uh, any final thoughts here? Obviously, we've got the uh, the Bell game coming up next. Uh, what's you know some final thoughts for us on on uh, Valley and Rochester on the uh, Bell game? Uh, I I I you know I I don't think this will be you know even though Rochester scored forty two points and Valley scored forty four last week, this one has low scoring game kind of written all over it. I think you know seventeen to ten, seventeen to fourteen, that type of game. Uh, but again, I th- you know, special teams I think is going to be big. I remember that game two years ago when you know Nate Parker had that big kickoff return. Uh, you know, special teams plays oftentimes have a you know. I still remember that 2010 game when Grant Downs had the big. Uh, or was it? It was yeah. Grant Grant it was it Evan Downs? I think they had the big kickoff return uh, for a touchdown for Rochester to win at Valley. Um, again, Rochester they spend a lot of time on special teams, and I think that's going to be big. Uh, again, right, you know, because again, with Zach Parks, I mean, he's he's capable of a big play in special teams as well. Yeah, it's been a little while since that bell has been uh, black and gold, so they're they're hoping to yeah. uh, get that thing brought back to Rochester. This but. is the thirty seventh bell game. They played they played a couple sectional games and a couple game a few games before the bell was even at stake. Mm-hmm. But it's been a bell game since nineteen eighty seven. This is the thirty seventh bell game. 18 18 through the first 36 yeah each each team has won the bell exactly 18 times wow so this will break the tie so this is this is what makes that's what makes rivalries rivalries right yeah yeah tiebreaker game okay yeah. so we've got that coming up yeah, for I you th- i want to thank michael lukens for that step yeah yeah should be a good one so i think what 16 was the last time that uh 2017 was the last time rochester won the bell 2014 was the last time they won the bell at valley yeah so 10 years right and 2020 was the last time Valley lost a regular season home game to anybody. Wow. Four, four years ago, yeah. Peru beat them. They That's the last home game they've lost. Regular season home game. Yeah. Garen Catholic beat them in the 2022 right. sectional. But the last time they lost a regular season home game was 2020 to Peru. Yeah. So, 
A lot on the line. Yeah, 18 in a row they've won at home. Yeah. Valley wants to keep that streak going. They want to keep the bell in green and yellow, mm -hmm. and uh, Rochester looking to uh, to bring it home for the first time in several years. So yeah. should be a good one. Really looking forward to it and uh, kind of uh, keeping an eye on the weather as well. And uh, got some, uh, some good young uh, interns from uh, Rochester. They're helping out on camera, so we're working on that with them. So be patient with that. But uh, they did a pretty good job in that week one game against Wabash, so we appreciate it. Uh, Evan and Jesse for their help. Really appreciate that. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us, Val. We're going to wrap this up. And uh, Bell Game coming up next here on RTC TV4.